evening. Welcome to Markets Today. I'm Lata Venkatesh. With me is Sarvi Upadhyay. Well, uh, we had a slightly stomach-churning start to the Indian markets, but uh, towards end of trade, the markets recovered from the day's low. They still ended lower by about half a percent, but nothing like the over 1% losses that we saw in early morning trade. It appears that for the moment at least, uh, the Indian markets in particular and the Asian markets in general have uh, reacted as much as they have to to the Greek problem and uh, that uh, hereafter it will be a wait and watch for events to unfold up until Sunday when Greece goes to vote on the referendum. Hi, sir. Hi, Lata. Stomach churning day and maybe it's going to be a stomach churning week as you said. That referendum is still a couple of days away. Well, we'll get you lots of global opinion, lots to talk about as we go through the volatility. Let's start with the headlines. The Lal Street shows resilience amidst the global drought triggered by Greece. Benchmark indices recover over 1% from the day's low. The Nifty falls 0.75% but closes above 8,300. The Sensex ends down over 160 points. Realty, IT and bank stocks face bulk of the selling pressure. Mid-caps underperform with the index losing 1.5%. Madhus and Sumi, Cox and Kings and Bharat Forge fall 2-6% to on concerns over their business exposure to the Eurozone. Infrastructure stocks like Lanco Infra, IVRC and NCC ended down 5-6%. to <clears throat> Mid-cap banks like Yuko, Oriental Bank of Commerce and Union ended weak as well. After Persistent Systems, KPIT Tech, now Tech Mahindra becomes the third IT company to issue an earnings warning. It says revenue and margins will show a sequential decline in the first quarter. The stock plummets over 7%. Those were some of the headlines that dominated the market's mind space. Here are the voices that you can catch on today's show. Market experts Ratnesh Kumar and Leo Puri will join in with their take on the current market volatility. We'll also tell you how the Chief Economic Advisor Arvin Subramanian and Finance Secretary Rajiv Mehershi are reading the Greek crisis and its impact on India. All that and more coming your way in the next half hour. But first, uh, market action should be absolutely let's go through what was really a roller coaster right Delata well if there was any equity market which showed some resilience in trade today it had to be in their indices faced a spectacular recovery in the second half of the day's uh, trading session Anuj Singhal is now standing by with all the details Anuj Indian market showing some resilience compared to the others today well, what a day for the market. Uh, I'm calling it a stunning recovery because even though the Nifty ended with deep cuts, things were looking far worse at one point. At one point, it looked like the market was breaking down. Yes, the, the Sensex was down 600 points at one point. The Nifty down nearly 200 points at one point. So from there, about 120, 130 points recovery on the Nifty. And really, the Indian market was the best performing Asian market uh, today. In fact, the best performing bigger market today. So a lot of uh, credit to the Indian market, uh, though a couple of stocks didn't do too well. For example, IT sector was down because of Tech Mahindra's profit warning. So let's talk about some of the stocks that led the market lower. As I said, the IT stocks were weak, so Tech Mahindra was down 7%. HCL Tech was down 3% and Infosys 1.5% in sympathy. Auto stocks, they also didn't have a good time today. Stocks like Maruti, Tata Motors, Mahindra and Mahindra were all down. Though for Maruti, you have to say it was purely a case of profit booking. Nifty losers, uh, whether it was low beta like Sun Pharma or high beta like Hindalco, we saw some selling. Asian Paints was down 2% as well. On the gaining side, the stocks that led the market higher were the two FMCG giants, Lever and ITC. Both were up in trade and BPCL was up through the day as you would expect on a day like this when crude prices were lower. In the mid caps, high beta stocks had a bit of a rough time today. Stocks like HCC, NCC, Gen Education were all lower. On the gaining side though, Starlight Tech, Subex and Praj were some notable winners though. So, so the market has recovered quite a bit, but experts believe that may be too early to celebrate. You need to see the next three or four days to see how things evolve, especially on that Greece front. Oh yes, thanks a lot for that Anuj. The markets uh, would of course be worried about Greece, but I just want to add that there may have been other fears on the market's mind. There was definitely a slowdown fear. Uh, the fact that uh, in the midst of all this turmoil, global slowdown could somehow take a hit uh, is uh, clearly impacting stocks like Hindalco, the metal stocks basically, even Tara Steel. That was very uh, evident. And in India itself, there is a lot of worry about how a lot of infrastructure companies are going to pay back their debt. So we saw the otherwise beleaguered companies, uh, you know, the Lancos, the GMRs, all of them continuing to have a little bit of a problem today, uh, the high debt uh, uh, companies, as well 
the guys who lend to them. So a lot of PSU banks, SBI was one among the bigger losers today, as were a bunch of uh, mid-cap PSU banks as well, uh, Union, Oriental Bank of Commerce, all of them. So that's entirely a domestic problem. There is a fear, uh, 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 which of course we thrashed out several times, uh, even o on Indianomics uh, last weekend, that uh, the NPA problem doesn't look resolvable in the normal scheme of things, and that something unusual is needed for some of these heavy debt companies. And you could see that uh, casting its pall on the Indian markets. All right, so plenty of concerns out there, local and domestic. On that note, let's move to some opinion now. Uh, some expert voices coming in. Leo Puri, MD of UTI AMC, says that despite the volatility in the markets, there is an underlying resilience and that Ratnesh Kumar adds that this is perhaps a good time to buy stocks. By definition, you have institutions with, with larger uh, uh, investment size and uh, mostly you will find that uh, you know they, they need not go for too much of knee-jerk reactions. Uh, so in fact, uh, uh, because of the fact that these kind of external opportunities uh, you know, might actually be looked at as, as some buying opportunities in the stocks which, which are light. Despite the apparent volatility, what you're seeing, in fact, is underlying resilience in the Indian markets compared to many other markets in the world. We will continue on a steady trend. I would not expect the same momentum we saw last year, but certainly a very steady trend, upward trend to continue, mm -hmm. not just this year, but perhaps the year after that as well. All right, so that's uh, some voices of optimism. Greece, of course, uh, has been the top focus uh, today around the world as uh, the prospect of the country leaving the Eurozone sent panic waves across uh, several global trading floors and dealing rooms. Over the weekend, Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras announced a referendum on the country's bailout terms that will be held on the coming Sunday, July the 5th, and the result will determine whether the country stays in Eurozone or not. Meanwhile, the ECB has frozen its uh, funding to Greece and capital controls, of course, have been imposed by Greece in as much as banks have been closed till the 6th of uh, July, effectively imposing controls on withdrawals. It is more than clear that this decision had no other goal but to blackmail the will of the Greek people and obstruct the smooth democratic process of the referendum, but they will not succeed. These moves will bring precisely the opposite result. The Greek people will be more resolute in its choice of rejecting the unacceptable bailout proposals and the ultimatum of lenders. We really moved mountains until the very last minute when Greek authorities closed the door. All elements of a credible and comprehensive deal were on the table. So I don't have not according to recent press info and news, I don't have to make new proposals today. I'm describing the proposals which were on the table and which were of a nature that we could have, I have to say, easily reach an agreement at the Euro meeting of last uh, uh, Saturday. What do the Greek people know about our flexibility and determination to help them? What do they know about the details of our common proposals? What do they know about this latest offer we were obliged not to take influence on the Greek votes, but to inform the Greek public of what is on the table. What did they know about this offer we published yesterday, putting together all the elements of the debate we went through together with uh, the Greek uh, authorities? Okay, that's the president of the European Commission uh, perhaps trying to get the Greeks to see the uh, rationale of the creditors and somehow get in or get on board with uh, the proposal that has been made, uh, saying that some of the, the uh, proposal pointers have been watered down so that Greeks can actually meet those commitments. Well, now let's uh, uh, look at how Indian markets may have posted some recovery in the second half of the day, but there are some stocks which have actually remained under pressure due to the increased exposure to your as a whole. We have Varinder Bansal now joining in with a list of these companies. Varinder, which are these stocks and how big is their exposure to Europe? So thank you so much. And apart from the equity markets, everyone was watching closely for the currency markets as well, especially how Euro behaves. Uh, you know, there are many companies, Indian companies, which have direct or indirect exposure to Europe. Uh, if Euro continues to weaken below that 1.1 mark, 
these will be few companies which will be on you know financial analyst radar which have to be watched for the next few quarters going ahead look at bharat forge that company derives nearly 25% of revenue from exports to europe and hence will be negatively impacted watch out for that company that stock was down nearly 4 5% uh, in the in the day to day mothers and sumi you know the company derives 80% of revenue from its subsidiaries that are based out of europe of course you know there will be translation losses as the management also confirmed us when they consolidated numbers in the indian indian parent company so that company could be in focus as well cox and king that stock was very weak today down nearly 6 7% the company is clearly negatively impacted due to translation impact uh, and also 65% of abita comes from uk travel and educational business again that is another company to watch out for hevel zero of course you know silvania impact will be seen on this company but the, the thing with hevel is that that company will not be majorly impacted like other companies because the profit or the, the bottom line number which come into the consolidated company is very less in number so that is one stock to watch out for of course some of the it companies like hcl technologies or others they have anywhere between 25 to 35 percent revenues coming directly from europe so keep an eye on that as well but on the bigger side you know bharat forge mothers and sumi cox and kings these are three companies which will be on analyst radar in the coming days as well as in when we see volatility happening with the euro going ahead well that point is taken by inner but to be fair uh, it is a little premature to assume that uh, because of the greek issue there will be a general problem all across europe and therefore a slow down so at the moment perhaps uh, the re reaction on these stocks like madison and bharat forge and cox and kings may have been a bit knee jerk we saw some bit of correction uh, later today as well and that could continue uh in any case so here's more opinion on how strongly india might feel jitters from the ongoing greek crisis this comes from the chief economic advisor arvind subramanian what impact has it has on india depends on what impact it has on the euro so we are indirectly affected whatever whichever way euro moves it, that will impact us so i believe that the, the dollar is already appreciated a percent against the euro and uh, which means either we appreciate against the euro or we depreciate to keep the same balance either way i don't know how the markets will react but markets are not reacting very well i believe this morning yeah, yeah. so there will be uncertainty but i think things will settle down in a day or two i mean so far india is behaving in line with other asian markets i think so yeah. no cause to worry sir as so far no cause to worry Okay, that was a word coming in from Indian policymakers. Moving on, Tech Mahindra slumped over seven percent in trade today after the company issued a cautious outlook for the first quarter of the current fiscal. Rima Dendulkar, who's been tracking that story, now joins in with the details. Rima, the third IT company to issue an earnings warning. Thanks so much for that. Well, the sense you get is that perhaps in Q1 and Q2 your margins are going to be lower, but Q2 should mark the bottom in terms of you know the margin decline. Remember already over the last few quarters margins have fallen a fair bit. Other than that, you know the management also referred to how visa costs will hurt their um, you know hurt the margin. So the visa cost expectation is that it should be about nine to twelve million dollars, which will be a one-time expense which will hurt their visa cost. Um, Q1, Q2 revenue growth will also be fairly subdued. In fact, in Q1 the company. as you pointed out is indicated that revenues will decline on a quarter and quarter basis but q3 q4 onwards um, there is significant um, not momentum but there is visibility that the company has and therefore q3 q4 growth should be largely in line with what the uh, industry growth average is but generally tech mahindra the reason why it's under pressure because it's the third it company to issue a, issue a warning after kpit and persistent the company expects a marginal decline in their revenues and margins on a quarter and quarter basis it's a seasonally weak mobility business. Which will drag the Q, uh, which will drag the revenues and margins. Also, the H-1B visa cost, which we are referring to, nine to twelve million dollars in cost, will hurt their margins. This margin improvement, um, for which the company is putting in some effort, will only be seen in Q3 of F-560. For the telecom space, growth is expected to remain uh, subdued, at least in F-560. Though enterprise is looking fairly healthy and will grow in line to above the industry growth average. The company is focusing on improving the EBITDA margin. That's a top priority. So they're looking to improve the use. utilization improve the margins of the acquired companies like lcc and softgen and they're hoping that automation will be um, one of the key initiatives which will help in achieving their margin objectives that is of improving it back to you all right thanks a lot for that reema while the deal pipeline for the communications business uh, remains healthy the company that's tech mahindra maintains that the organic growth in the area will remain subdued through this fiscal which in turn means that the revenue growth will be under pressure Let's listen. 
Well, a movement of 1% this way or that way is very difficult to predict. But when we can predict, we, uh, dis- uh, we chose to uh, disclose it to the uh, market. I mean, uh, one percentage is normally within a, uh, uh, with, is seen as part of an uh, acceptable error. All right, from one IT major to another, Wipro Group Chairman Azim Premji says that uh, global IT spend has inched up only modestly in the last few months while maintaining that he expects developed economies to fare better in 2015. Premji, in his letter to shareholders, says that he expects macroeconomic forces to continue influencing the global economic outlook. Technological innovation and client adoption to digital technologies, he says, is what is going to drive the IT sector, which also means that the existing workforce needs to be skilled sufficiently to take advantage of the new growth opportunities. Okay, time for a break now, but thereafter we will chat with Sudarshan Sukhani to get some technical ideas. We'll also speak about other stocks that were in the news today.